your display name to your first name and your organization. Um, I believe everybody uh, here has, has met each other, but perhaps not. So um, unfortunately we, we have a, I mean, it's good. We have a, a good sized group today. We had 19 people registered, but we don't have time to um, do individual uh, introductions today. So if you could just put your first name and your organization name in your display name, that would be helpful. Thanks. And we're going to do some polling today during the session. So the easiest way to do that is to do it on your cell phone. So if you could have that nearby, it will also work on your laptop, but, or whatever computer you're working on, uh, but it's a little, you'll have to keep going between screens. And so uh, uh, probably the cell phone is, is easier to use. Good afternoon, everybody. If you're just joining us, if you could, uh, hello. Uh, and uh, if you could uh, please um, change your display name to include your first and name and your organization, that would be really helpful. Um, I'm afraid we don't have time to do individual introductions today. So um, thank you and uh, uh, as I was just saying, if you could have your cell phone nearby, that would be helpful. We're going to do some uh, polling uh, during this meeting, uh, and um, it just works better on a, on a cell phone. You can use the, your, your um, laptop or computer if, if you need to. Excuse me, Rudy, but mm -hmm. I've never done that. Uh, how do you, we'll, we'll, how do, you we'll, do this? The we'll phone? tell you. I, I know how to do the poll on the yeah, it's not Zoom polling. Uh, it'll it's pretty oh. straightforward, but we'll we'll get to it when when oh, we start. Okay. Yeah. So we are now at sixteen uh, or so people here. So um, I think maybe we should go ahead and get started uh, because we have a full uh, program today. Um, uh, Halima, I think you can um, unshare your screen so I can get a, so we can get a gallery view of everybody. It's nice to see everybody. Um, again, I hope you're all doing well. And um, it, we haven't had a chance to do a sharing session in a little while or discussion, so I'm really looking forward to this. We do have a full um, agenda, but I did want to take a few minutes to, to, to do an icebreaker. Um, and so, um, Halima, if you wouldn't mind putting the um, icebreaker um, uh, information in the chat, that would be wonderful. And I will share my screen here. So uh, today we just wanted to see how, oops, there we go. We wanted to see how everybody was doing. So. If you um, go on your cell phone to um, what it says there, www.menti.com and use the code 6197090. Um, what three words describe your past week? Once you submit, then we'll start to see it on our screen here. So remember after you put your words in to, to press submit. Does anybody? Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, so with this word cloud, the more people that obviously you put the same word will be bigger. So we have some busy, busy is a big one, obviously, stressful, anxious. Um, 
but it's good. I see some joyful and fun and interesting as well there. I think I'll just give it another minute to it. This does take some time when you have a lot of people doing it, I guess. We had this conversation among our staff earlier this week and we all also felt that it was like a up and down and then an up and down and up and down. <laughs> So, so it looks like busy is actually the one that, that wins out of, of all of these words today. Um, great, I, but, I, but I am glad to see some of those sunny and, and happy and hopeful words in there as well. So thanks for participating that. I, I always find those fun to, to play with. Um, we um, have, as I said, a full agenda. And um, if um, Halima, you could share the, the screen for the agenda again. Thank you. Um, we are basically um, splitting this meeting into two parts. The first part will be a sharing session to talk about learner retention and also talk about outreach and recruitment. The second part of the meeting will be discussions in small groups. Um, about what the future might look like for your adult ESOL classes, you know, based on, on what your current experience has been with online instruction. Um, so, um, so you can unshare your screen again. Thank you, Halima. Uh, I'd appreciate if uh, those of you who are interested in sharing on either of those topics, you could put your um, names in the chat and tell us um, uh, which topic you want to talk about, and that might help us um, organize our, our time a little bit easier. Um, again, just I didn't over go over the housekeeping. Uh, please keep yourself muted when you're not speaking, and um, if it's helpful, put one distraction away. Uh, we'll be recording this, or we are recording this meeting, so we will uh, make it available to you all later. Um, so before we jump into our discussion, actually, what I'd like to do is, is uh, mention uh, a project that is very near and dear to my heart, which is the Program Administrator Toolkit, um, and that we are moving forward with making this an online uh, version, which means it will be totally searchable um, and updatable. Um, so um, we also are going to be adding a chapter on uh, what program managers need to think about when instruction is online, whether that's on, you know, um, required, like we, the situation we are in now, or uh, whether we choose that option. And I'm really pleased that Alex, who's here today, uh, is, is going to help us draft that chapter um, as well. As you all know, he was the main author of the original toolkit. So we're very excited about these developments. Um, this meeting will be, um, really great uh, in terms of helping us decide what we wanna put in that chapter, that new chapter, um, and perhaps some of the provider examples we might want to highlight. Um, so anyway, uh, if we could move forward with our, um, our, our sharing, I, I, th I thought that the topics of retention and, um, and uh, outreach uh, would be good because um, these seem to be um, ones that uh, people would be thinking about right now as you're in the middle of your classes right now, but also thinking about what's going to happen next session and how are you going to get um, learners enrolled in your classes. Um, so to start out, I, I wanted to actually do another little poll uh, on uh, learner retention and persistence. And what I'm going to do here is, again, share my screen. Um, you will, uh, on the Mentimeter on your phone that you used for the last one, it will say, if you still have it up, it says exit and start a new presentation, um, something like that. Vote on another presentation. Um, or you can go, it gives you the directions here. Um, 
The code is 9005765. Interested to know uh, among all of you uh, what your experiences is with retention. Is it better with online classes? Is it the same or is it worse? Just to get a picture before we um, uh, go into our discussion here. And again, if you would like to share something about this or talk about um, you know, strategies that you've used um, uh, recently to help with learner retention, please um, just jot that in the chat while we wait for our um, numbers to show up here. So, so far, it looks like it's better with online classes. Oh, okay, now it's changing again. <laughs> Interesting. Um, although it looks like the majority is either better or the same as. I'll just wait another couple of, another few seconds on that. Okay, so actually now it's looking like it's pretty much evenly divided. That's very interesting. Okay, um, I'm going to stop sharing that now. Um, so um, I see nobody's volunteered uh, to 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 speak in the in the chat. So um, if that's the case, uh, I might just ask um, uh, maybe. Um, um, Cindy, uh, do you mind if, if I ask you to talk about your recent experience with um, retention and when you what happened when um, people weren't showing up in your class? Uh, sure. Um, can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so we started the year off with a lot more people registering than we anticipated. But when the classes actually started, not a lot of people showed up. Um, but we found out the reason was because they needed somebody familiar to call them instead of somebody, um, we had teachers and the school administrators from the school they were registered in and not the school that's their neighborhood school. So once we had their neighborhood school, um, CSC, a school coordinator call them, uh, they all started showing up to classes which was really great. So we started having a lot of people show up to classes. However, we did have two classes that um, we couldn't keep the students in because of work or because of something. And so we ended up canceling those classes. And then I'm doing a pilot program. Now, instead of doing the classes in um, semesters like I had been doing, I'm trying quarterly. So we are running um, seven week classes instead of the full 15 week classes. Um, and we just started it this month. So, but so far so good. Um, we have 15 students enrolled in each class. And so far, I mean, it's been week two. Um, we've, we've had about 90% show up for those classes. So we'll, we'll see if that continues. But in the other classes, now that we've got the students coming, they're, they're coming pretty regularly, but we had a slow start. But um, I would say the retention's about the same as it was when we were in person at this time last year in November. But right around Thanksgiving is usually when we get the nosedive. And that's, that was what happened last year. We just had people go away for Thanksgiving and no one ever came back. So we'll see what December looks like. Thank you. Hopefully. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, does anybody want to comment who, who somebody whose um, persistence is higher than uh, before? Does anybody want to comment on that and, and why uh, they think that's the case? Well, in our case, it's like I am very happy uh, that our retention uh, is really good. 
the students are coming more of and often than it used to be when they have to come to a site. Now they connect and they are happy and the, the number of students in each class are coming consistently. So that is really great. And as I seen, they were saying, yeah, we have always the problem after some mm -hmm. leaving. Oh my God, you know, that was always the scary part. But uh, in our classes, I think I have like four classes still, uh, now, but our classes are going to finish before Thanksgiving. Um, and I have another classes that are going to end in, in, in December. So we see what happened with the December ones, but so far so good with the ones that are going to finish next week. So in that, uh, because we, we, we provide it three nights a week, uh, two hours, so uh, the, the, the time, I mean, the, it's, on, it's 10 weeks. And so that's, that was, I think that was perfect. And I'm very happy, re really, and the teachers too. Yeah, of course, you know, uh, still thinking that a beginner, they need more interaction, the, the high levels, uh, that's for sure. They're missing that part. But uh, the otherwise, uh, you know, high levels, I think they're doing really, really great. That's great to hear. Yeah. Um, uh, on the other side, Shari in our chat has said all of their participants have infants or toddlers, which is challenging. Um, and then also some of them have school age children, so it's really difficult for them to participate fully. Um, and Pam has a very good question. Are people successful with beginner classes? Does that, is it different for people with beginner classes? If somebody wants to respond to that. This is Shannon with CASA. Yeah, we had been worried that our lower level students might struggle more than like the intermediate or advanced, but in practice, we have not found that to be the case. Um, I think like speaking to the retention and attendance side, um, people have mentioned like as one of the positive sides of the virtual class is no commute. Um, you know, even when it fit people's work schedule to come afterwards, you know, still yes. with the drag of the commute and then that on top of other family responsibilities, like they really feel uh, it's like a de-stressor to not have to have that added to the class. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we have seen with real small children, yeah, I was hoping that, you know, we, we do provide childcare um, with our in-person classes and but only for parents with children um, ages two and above. And so I was hoping with the younger age that would um, remove a barrier, but we actually have had people withdraw saying that, you know, when they have those itty bitty babies, it's just too hard for them to concentrate on the class. But mm -hmm. yeah, I would say though, it really, we haven't seen, you know, participation vary in accordance to the students, um, you know, level assignment. There's other things that seem to impact it more. What about other folks? Um. Um, I was going to say that we're the same. Um, the uh, lower level classes are doing as well as the higher level classes. Um, and we find for our group, the evening classes are doing better than the morning classes. Um, and I think it's because during the morning classes, um, their kids are in school and a lot of them are pulled away to help the kids with their school or their classes or if they have little little ones there's no one else like an older sibling to watch the little kid because they're um they're in school but in the evening the older kids watch the younger siblings and the parents seem to have more success logging on mm -hmm. so but it's about the same for lower levels higher level um, that's really great to hear actually um anyone else care to comment on that and just one more thing, like with um, like having kids in school simultaneously, we found that with our morning participants, it wasn't working because of like um, the bandwidth for their internet. They couldn't have their kids doing classes and themselves simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and for those that, uh, I mean, are there other, what are other factors um, uh, for, students not to, I mean, sorry, um, where you've seen a big drop off in persistence uh, or any other factors that, um, that you see besides the child uh, having children in the home? Um, 
I would say again for um, we actually had one class that started off with 10 students and now she's down to two but she says four of her students have tested positive for COVID-19 oh, no. and one of them is in the mm -hmm. hospital um, so it's it's difficult when you're feeling poorly to want to sit through a zoom class so um, a lot of them were participating even though they were sick and then they would just log off early but now she's saying they're they're not coming at all so I guess they're feeling much more poorly than before. Mm -hmm. So that's one factor that's happening in one class. And then another class, um, similar to what Shannon said, when there's kids in the, their, their Zoom is kind of in and out, and then they're starting to get yeah. frustrated. So a lot of those students have asked if they can move to an evening class as opposed to a morning class, mm -hmm. because it just, it's harder during the day. Mm -hmm. so. I mean, I assume that your programs are, 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 most of you are continuing some of the same strategies that you use when in person in terms of if you see a drop off that you follow up with learners by phone and everything. Are there any um, new things that you would say that you've introduced once, I mean, since we're, we're online now? Stacy? Well, uh, a few of our students moved to like Florida or back mm -hmm. to their home country, we can still offer classes for them. So that's a benefit of mm -hmm. this online thing. Definitely. Um, I think that, um, I think we'll actually just move on because it kind of segues into the, the topic of, uh, of um, recruitment and outreach and how to, um, make sure that that you have um, uh, learners for your for your upcoming sessions. Um, has um, actually, sorry, I have a I have another poll here, <laughs> so hold on. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again. Um, this is a question that I'm interested in, we are interested in also at McHale. And I know that there is a lot of nuance behind this, but in terms of your enrollment, um, has your enrollment decreased, increased, or is it about the same as when your classes were in person? Yeah, and I think, again, it's, it's interesting to get a picture of this as we uh, talk about outreach and recruitment, as well as our, you know, breakout groups, basically. Um, and it speaks to how, how well our, our learners or your learners have responded to, to the online environment. So again, it looks like, uh, a pretty even breakout here. But Rudy, um, mm -hmm. although our enrollment is about the same, uh, our population changed. Yes, uh, as I said, that, that that's one of the nuances behind this, isn't it? Do you wanna to speak to that, Amoke? How did your population change? I, I think I might've shared this earlier, but um, the majority of our students are actually new to our program. Mm -hmm. They are students who used to study with the Chinese uh, senior center, who no longer offers the on, who does not offer online classes now. Uh -huh. So we've got, my goodness, over 50 some new students and our other students who were not comfortable with the the internet or didn't have access or for whatever reason, I've not been able to assess that yet, uh, they didn't return. Mm -hmm. so. It sounds like this, I'm seeing nodding heads. So I think maybe you're not the only uh, program for which this has happened the, the, that you're, you're seeing the same, may seem the same numbers, but that they're different people. Oh, can I ask? Yes. Oh, this is Chow Chow from CCC. Our, we are the Chinese Community Service Center. Mm -hmm. During this time, we are still offering 
five ESO classes every week, Monday through Friday, one per day. And we have more students coming in and from at least around 20 to 30 for each class. Mm. And the basic, the basic level, it's more students and there are still some students who want to uh, join. And I, I have to say no, because it's already like a, a half, almost half of the semester. So I don't know, you are also in Rockville Senior Center. So in your place, you don't offer Chinese class, uh, the, the ESO class anymore. I'm sorry, what's your question? You said some of uh, uh, the community center, they don't offer, offer ESO class, so they go to Rockville Senior Center. That's what they told us when they enrolled. Oh. I mean, I don't think you're the only senior center. Right, right. So, but so that might be the reason, the, maybe these people come from another senior center. Mm. Right, but then you mentioned there are a lot of Chinese. Yeah, they are. Oh, okay. I, I just want to know. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really glad because we have, you know, over, over 60 some people enrolled this semester, which I was really concerned to have such a good enrollment. Mm. So Chow Chow, uh, did you do any extra outreach to that, that resulted in your higher numbers or? Well, actually, we just put on some ads and you know, make people know. And uh, it's more people than before and very persistent. I don't think we have maybe just one or two in the beginning when they say they cannot join due to the little kids at all. But then other than that, I would think our participating rate is like a 90, over 90%. Mm -hmm. and they, um, they really work hard. It's a good environment. Would anybody like to share uh, any? I have a question, please, uh -huh. for Chow Chow for relief. Uh, your instructors, are they native English speakers or a mix uh, or what, what? No, they are, we are bilingual. Chinese and English. I bilingual. beg your pardon, they're what? Yep. We they're bilingual. bilingual. Yeah, right. bilingual. But I'm asking, are you, do you use, are they native English speakers? No. What is their, what is, oh, okay, that's what I want to know. Okay, thank you. Um, obviously that they're, they're, you know, with in-person uh, classes, you know, we have, you know, we use social media and uh, former students and, you know, um, direct outreach. Are there any strategies that people have been using that they find, uh, that they find have worked given our current environment? Or is it, is it generally more of the same? We have a comment about increasing, um, that they had an increase in their classes because of the drop-in classes where anyone could join. Uh-huh. Uh, sorry, I was asking, uh, Stacy. Oh, um, I had somebody join from like Crofton and normally I don't get people joining like outside of uh, the, DC Bethesda area. So I, th I think they found us through the, uh, the McHale website. I mean, it could have been our website, but I, and because they're virtual, you can, anybody can sign up, doesn't matter your location. So I think somebody found me from your wet, from the McHale website, searching for classes. Pam? Um, we've struggled a lot in this area. So I'm looking at for real practical ideas. Um, we had in the previous year, we had a large number of students and our marketing was largely word of mouth. And I somehow expected that to happen again, but it didn't. Um, 
and and they favor our classes favored the lower level students, but the majority of the people who signed up needed higher level classes. So I'm puzzling about what to do about that. Um, you know, I have only volunteer teachers, so it's difficult to ask them to change, you know, teaching something new. So I, I'm just looking for input. Um, it's the main reason I came to the meeting. Pam, uh, this might not help, but um, I'm actually looking for a low um, beginner teacher because um, my um, low beginning class, one of them is getting rather large and the teacher wants to separate the three students who need a little bit more attention. So I don't know if I should send them to to your teacher or if your teacher wants to volunteer for my organization. But um, right now um, I need somebody for a low beginner. Yeah, if you want to send them, please do. Um, we are going to start, we just finished eight weeks and we're going to start a second eight weeks the Monday after Thanksgiving. I have a question for Pam. So Pam, are you saying your beginning class went well in no. terms of, oh, <laughs> I didn't understand what you were They're very small, the very small. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. And, and is that because of the teacher? Or I, I got kind of confused with the conversation between Stacy and you. So, so I, I, the teacher could be part of it. Um, she is a volunteer. She is a volunteer, um, and does well in the in person. But I, I don't think it's as strong in the in the online. But at the same time, we normally get. I want to say seventy five percent of our students who test at the beginner one, beginner two, or or literacy level, and. Um, for this go around, the people who registered for my classes were 50% or more in the intermediate one or two level. We're not offering advanced, um, which is unusual. It's really unusual for us. And I think um, it's hard for some of our students. We have people who are illiterate in their own language. Um, our program was focused on an elementary school that's 85% ESOL parents. So the community that we served was, um, they were all beginners that, you know, 75%, like I said. So I'm just wondering, I, I've been looking for any suggestions that anyone might have. I me. wanted to share my experience with our beginning class with you, Pam. Um, um, could we, oh. sorry, excuse me, uh, I'm okay. I'm um, we're, we're trying to stick with, um, uh, just because our time is short here. Pam, Maybe you and Pam can connect yeah. um, offline or outside of this meeting. Uh, I just, but if there's anybody who, who has particular uh, advice for Pam on outreach ideas. Well, I'd just be interested to hear how you all do it. Hi, everybody. This is Anna. Um, I was just going to say I really appreciated that Mikhail um, posted the for fall <clears throat> the open the the programs that we're still recruiting because like we we use that a lot we shared it with a lot of our students when um when we you know we couldn't take any more students because we reduced the class sizes for our registration based classes and um and i know that some students you know reached out to to some of you guys i think the so so that's a way that can help you all is um, is is to have that information as available as you can, um, and not just like Rudy. Like I know, 
you guys had one document that was just people's phone numbers, like the program manager's phone numbers, but our students are probably not going to call somebody because they're, you know, they're not going to feel capable to do that, a lot of them. So, so the one that was very specific and had, you know, the place to, like, you know, to the login, for the registration form link right there and things like that, I think that's, mm -hmm. would probably help every program. Thanks. Um, we are thinking about, uh, obviously, also how to support all of you uh, in terms of getting the word out. Um, and it's not just um, uh, limited to, to the effort that Anna was speaking about, but also thinking about who, for instance, in the school system we can talk to uh, so that they know uh, about all of the network programs. Uh, for instance, um, you know, ESOL teachers within the MCPS system who might be able to, to spread the word that way. So we are thinking about um, outreach and we'll, we'll tell you more when, when uh, we go a little bit further on down that path. I, I wanted at this point to just point to Shari's comment in the chat about that they're seeing actually the opposite trend, um, that they are getting more parents testing at the beginner levels um, and that what, what she plans to do um, um, to, to email flyers and referral forms to all the, um, to, sorry, all the workers who've referred participants in the past. Um, um, so we will, um, uh, I'm sorry to have to cut this, this discussion short, but um, I'm hoping now that all of us have heard um, Pam's uh, and, and others of our concerns and maybe uh, that will stimulate a discussion outside of this meeting. Uh, I also urge you if you have these challenging things that you're enco uh, encountering to put it in the Google group because I think that there can be some good um, responses that way. Um, and please let me know if you if you do want to have another like little brown bag or something on any topic, uh, we'd be happy to host something like that too. But I did want to get to the second part of our uh, our meeting, which is really to talk about the future. Um, and uh, I know that things are still uncertain right now, um, but um, MCPS, as many of you know, has come out with their recovery plan. Obviously, it's, it's dependent on health indicators still. Um, but they they have a, a, a plan, and um, I, I think it um, is a good idea for us to at least to, to think about this. I'm sure that many of you are thinking about this already. Um, but um, what are the things that we've learned from from going online, and and what does it mean for when we go forward and we can have classes in person again? Um, I found a very interesting blog post, which I hope that many of you had had a chance to look at. Um, and Halima, if you don't mind sharing the, the um, link there in the chat, thank you. Um, I just thought it would be a nice an interesting uh, jumping off point for this discussion because uh, the author in this blog post talks about how innovation comes from um, you know, times of uh, stress or, um, and, and I think that um, one of the pre uh, premises she, or, or she puts forward that um, because uh, instruction or since instruction has gone online mainly, it's become more learner-centered, that classes are more learner-centered. So I, I thought that was an interesting premise and I wondered if people thought that was true and that kind of actually is one of the factors in when you're thinking about, do we keep online some ongoing classes? Do we create hybrids? Um, do we go back to, to all in person? So it really depends on the organization. All of your experiences are gonna be different, but we did wanna have a chance for you to just kind of share where you are uh, on this thinking and to give you the opportunity to kind of think about it. Um, so if Halima, you could talk about how this will work with the breakout groups and I will work on breaking people out. This will be a random uh, breakout group. I shared the um, Google document on there. Uh, we're going to be in three different breakout groups. Um, in, in each one, 
there will be Christine, Rudy, and myself. And these are the two questions that we hope um, to cover. Um, we would request uh, one of, uh, for each of the breakout groups, we would request somebody in there to take the notes. Um, and the way that we're going to select that is the person whose first name is closest to the alphabet in whichever group you're in. We appreciate that in advance. Okay, it's just gonna take me another minute. And we'll be out of each of those groups um, five uh, at 1.55, just to come back uh, in the main group. Can you make the print larger? Sure. Thank you. And I posted the link also in the chat, so each one of you should have access to the document. Got it, thank you. Can everybody open that um, or do we need to uh, fix it so that it's... I cannot open it, it won't let me. Okay, Halima, we might need to make an adjustment on that. Yeah, it says you can't open it. You can't open the link? Uh, it says it. unable to open the file at this time. Hmm. Give me one moment, I'll stop sharing my screen. I see some people are already in the document. Uh, uh, sure, it's doing that. Yeah, I can't get in. Well, each of us as facilitators should be able to share our screen once we get in. Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, I'm going to break you out into groups. Um, so Christine is, is a facilitator for room one, I will be room two, and Halima will be room three. So here you go. Oops.
Hi, Vanessa. Hi. I'm sorry. Were you sitting in uh, out here for a long time? Uh, no, not long. I was in the group three and then my oh. internet connection just kicked me out and I oh. fell back because I was chosen as note taker. <laughs> oh. <laughs> sorry, I didn't. Um, I was also in a room, so. I, no, I it's okay. <laughs> okay. It's okay. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm sorry we didn't have uh, a little more time to talk about that, but because uh, I, I think it's really an interesting question. Um, and I don't know how you found that blog post. I think there was a lot of interesting things in there, but just a resource that. Um, Hi everybody, uh, we're back to, to our main room. Um, I'm sorry that uh, our time is up for today, but um, we will make sure that the, the notes are, um, the notes that we took in our breakout groups are sent to everybody who is here so you can see uh, what all of your colleagues have said about these questions. Um, before we um, end, I wanna just um, make a couple of announcements or reminders that we have an instructor workshop coming up um, on November 18th on digital, uh, digital literacy framework. Um, and there's also an instructor social hour on November 18th. So if you uh, want to let all of your instructors know about that, um, well, we welcome them. And again, that is really kind of an unstructured opportunity just to talk with other, other instructors. So Great. yeah, um, I hope this meeting has been useful, at least in um, understanding a bit what your um, peers are thinking about. Um, please, again, follow up uh, with any um, other topics and things you would like to see covered in these meetings. Um, our ears are open. Um, otherwise, uh, I wish you all a, a good afternoon. Thank you, my dear. Thank Did you I so forget much. anything? Oh, Halima, I forgot the, the um, survey. <laughs> we have a survey for you to fill out, and if Halima, you could put the the. It's in um, the chat. It is in the chat. Okay, yeah, the I chat. just don't have my yeah. chat open. If you could please uh, complete the survey, we we're very appreciative. Um, so, and and in fact, we'll I'll just leave the meeting open for a few minutes here. If you just want to go right now to that uh, link um, and fill out the survey. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.